dynamic memory allocation, and I think it's going to die soon. It's just going to be a second before it dies. So dynamic memory allocation, as we mentioned, when you don't have dynamic memory allocation, I want everybody's attention. When we don't have dynamic memory allocation, you create an array. Everything's inside your executable. When you do have dynamic memory allocation, things go outside of the executable. So your executable shrinks and becomes smaller. Does that make sense to everyone? OK. That's number one. Number two. So, we, are we on one? Yeah. So when you are creating, when you actually create a pointer for dynamic memory allocation, you should be careful not to use it. Because if you use it, it becomes what we call it an uninitialized pointer assignment. And therefore, it's going to crash and you're going to have a segmentation fault. So pointers should not be used when you actually are using, when you haven't done any dynamic memory allocation. You always set the pointer to null before you do anything, OK? But if you set it to null and try to use it, again, it's going to crash telling you you have a null pointer assignment, which means you said it's not pointing to anywhere, but you are telling me three elements after nowhere. That's a crash. You shouldn't do that. Careful. You always stay within the range of your dynamic dynamically allocated memory. You go out even one, it fails on you because that memory doesn't break on you. And if you're lucky, it crashes. The worst one is that you have another variable of your own over there, and it overwrites that one, and you will not notice. That's the worst bug ever because you are setting the name, and the student number gets destroyed because you went one byte extra. Be extremely careful with the size of your dynamic memory allocation. Are we OK? Next one. If you are pointing to something, don't allocate something else. Because the other one's connection will be severed, and it's going to get lost in memory. So if you, if you already pointed it to something, you don't just point to something else if, if you want to resize it or something or set it to a new one. You have to make sure that you first delete that one. And that becomes memory leak. We don't want it. OK? And you have absolutely no access to it. The only way that you can get rid of that is to reboot your computer. OK? So you cr that the, the correct state of unused pointer in, the, in dynamic memory allocation is that it's set to null. And if you are tracking its size, the size is set to zero. Not always you are using a string that is null terminated that you can find out where the end is. Sometimes you have an array of integers. For that, you need to keep track of the size. I have 50 integers, 20 integers. You don't know, right? So for that, you need to keep track of the size and have it zero. So after you actually do the allocation, you update everything, and you have everything set. And when you are done, you delete them. And after you delete, you set it to null again, always. After deleting, you set it to null, and that's a beautiful thing. you got to make sure when you are deleting, you delete it exactly the same way you, you allocated it. If you delete it incorrectly without the square bracket, for example, only the first element is going to get wiped out. The rest becomes memory leak, which we don't want to. So if m that are not equal thing, take care of unfinished business. As I told you, if you follow the rule that this if is not needed. OK, I see many of the students put it over there. And I say, good, thank you. But you didn't need to write that. And if you actually give the sample code to a company to assess to see how much you know, you write such an if statement, they're going to know you don't know how the delete works. OK? Well, which means it's better to get used to it. So reuse memory with new size and specs. 
and always stay within the range of your memory. Are we okay with this? All right. How do we resize memory? Resizing, how does it happen? If I, if I want to have somebody's name and I see oh, it's mistake or you create something for a string and you want to make the string bigger without losing the data. Resizing means making something bigger without losing the data. It means you name the guy Fred Soleil and then you find out the last name is actually Soleil Manlu. You don't want to use, lose the Soleil, you want to add a Manlu at the end. So how do we do that? How do we resize memory? This we haven't taught, but I'm going to go through the slide and then we stop. So you kind of get an idea of what's going on, and then we're going to stop. You, by the way, constructors are for next week, not this week. This week is only member functions, but I find it silly because right after, at the beginning, it, it, you crave to, to teach it. You know what I mean? So that didn't make sense. So, When you, have, when you have a piece of memory that you want to resize and you want to make it bigger without losing the data, first, what you need to do is to create a temporary memory of the same type and allocate the new size that you want. It's exactly, you have a small cup of coffee, you want to add some more milk to it, but it's completely full. What do you do? You get a bigger cup first. That's what you do. Then you copy the value to the bigger cup and put everything right in there. So you get all the value from the old one and copy it into the new one. After doing all that, the old cup is not needed anymore. You delete it. You delete the old cup and throw it away. You don't want it anymore. But the pointer is still pointing to the garbage cup that you had that you deleted. So you have to make sure that the pointer points to the new one. Okay? So you have to make sure that the pointer that you had for mData points to the new one, and after everything is done, you have a bigger memory. It's not at the same place, but who cares? It contains the same data. I went through it very quickly because I didn't teach it yet. I just want you to get ready. But remember, this is what you do. Two cups of coffee, small, big. You get a big one, you pour it into that one, you throw this one away, you give that one to the other hand. <laughs> okay? It's always like that. One more time. No, if you just, if you, if you, if you first point to the new one, then you don't have access to the old one anymore. Old one gets lost, memory leak. No. How do you delete the old one? You said, you said, see, this is what you're saying. So I have this, right? I get the new one. I copy everything from old one to new one, right? Now I don't want it. I cannot make the mData point to temp. If I do that, the old one is gone, right? Now I delete it. Now that I delete, mData is pointing to garbage, right? So I have to update. Update the size, make sure that the size is the new one, and then I have to copy, uh, copy where temp is pointing to point to M data, and then after that, you're okay. I'll put these things in there. So I'll, I'm going to put these three slides, these first three ones. in the notes, and that's going to call it a day. See if it's going to have enough, because that one is like this much left. <laughs> Oh, the utils has to be gone too. So another thing that it's good actually to know, do you see that utils are not added over here? I don't want you to see them. Don't delete files when they are in a repository. Check by repository. You have to delete them using tortoise git. So I have to do this, right click, and say tortoise git delete. Okay? If you delete it with your own files, then repository is going to get confused. 
because it says there were files over here that I'm keeping track of that you removed. What do I do with it? And done. On Linux, it's different. In Linux, when you delete it, actually, Git detects it. And, but in here, you have to do that. Anyways, so I have those. And in here, I'm going to make submit them, uh, commit them. So I'm going to come over here. Uh, and I'm going to add the new ones too. DMA and slides. And <laughs> look at my slides. Anyways, slides. Okay. All right. That's that. Now, questions. Everything saved? Any questions? Yes. What? Keep the old data too. You don't want to change the name. Exactly. So, yeah. What I'm saying is that if it's an array of characters, you can keep track of what the size is because you you. Mark the end by it with a null, right? But let's say it's an array of integers. How do you know how many you had? You have to always keep track of the size. OK? Uh, so later on, we're going to actually create a class, call it string. So we can do everything that you do with string copy using a class so you don't have to worry about the string copy and stuff. So it works exactly like a variable. We'll come to that, and you'll see exactly how it's done. It's pretty simple. Uh, any questions? I want to stop the recording. Suggestions? Objections? Question one? Question two? Yes. You can read. Read it, it's going to be introduced to you. Okay. I, I, let me just stop.